Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation as part of the Industry Insight webinar series. The topic this time is legal project management, how to make it actually work. The presentation today will be followed by a Q&A. Please enter your questions into the question box in the webinar panel on the right side of your screen. All questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. We're recording this webinar, and we'll be sending a video and a follow-up email in a few days. We'll also post the video on our blog at www.lawtechnologytoday.org. With that, I'll hand things over to our moderator, Mike Hamilton of Extero. Hey, thank you, Austin, and thank you, everyone in the audience, for for attending today's webcast. Uh, first, a quick word about today's webcast sponsor, which is Xtero. Xtero is the preferred provider of e-discovery software specifically designed for in-house legal and IT teams at Global 2000 and AMWA 200 organizations. It's built on a simple concept of process optimization. Xtero helps organizations improve and simplify e-discovery activities. With Xtero's orchestrated e-discovery suite, traditionally fractured and fragmented e-discovery efforts are mended by orchestrating and automating tasks in a coordinated workflow across the entire e-discovery process, reducing time, cost, and risk associated with e-discovery. For more information, visit www.xtero.com. So now let's get to know our webcast panel. Um, I'm really looking forward to today's discussion. Um, our panel is filled with three savvy legal project management professionals, and I'll give them a second to tell them a little bit about their background when it comes to legal project management. So our first webcast panelist is Michael Collier, attorney and legal process strategist at Davis Wright Tremaine. Uh, Michael, can you uh, give our audience a little background about yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, so, attorney and legal process strategist, DWT. Uh, DWT has an innovation team called DWT De Novo, and I'm a member of that team. So, not only do I practice traditional uh, transactional law, but I try to incorporate uh, innovation, legal process management, and technology into the way that I do it. In addition, we design legal solutions that essentially enhance the traditional uh, legal service delivery for clients. Thank you, Michael. And our second webcast panelist is Adam Poppelmeyer, Senior Litigation Paralegal, Academy Mutin Rosenman, uh, LLP. Adam, uh, do you mind giving our audience a little background about yourself? Hi. Good afternoon. Good morning. Um, I'm a Senior Litigation Paralegal at Cat Mutin Rosenman. Uh, I oversee case teams on uh, large civil matters and investigations with a uh, primary focus on project management, uh, workflow process design, data analytics, and uh, e-discovery consulting. Thank you, Adam. And our third and final webcast panelist is Tara Jones, lead paralegal, e-discovery and consumer litigation at AOL. Tara, thanks for joining us. Uh, mind giving us a little background about yourself? Hi, thanks. Yep, um, I've been at AOL for almost 20 years, and I've been in eDiscovery since 2010. I manage the eDiscovery business process. Um, we actually rely heavily on legal project management uh, because our team is extremely lean, and uh, to be honest, we simply don't have the resources to continuously uh, recreate the wheel. So um, I guess that's why I'm here to talk about how we uh, try to uh, create our process as efficiently as possible. Tara, that's the sole reason why you're here is because you're uh, you've done this before, and and everyone on this panel has a wealth of experience and expertise on how to help people on this call who are attending, uh, you know, actually leverage legal project management effectively at their organization. So uh, there is a question uh, box in your webinar control panel. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to submit those. Uh, we will have a Q&A period at the end of the broadcast. One more housekeeping item, the commentary and positions discussed by our panels today are just that, their commentary and positions and do not necessarily reflect the positions and thoughts of the organizations they represent. Okay, we met our webcast panel. Let's dive right into, the, into today's presentation. So you probably heard the buzz about legal project management. And to be honest, you're probably sick of hearing the normal theoretical chatter about it. Moving beyond these theoretical talking points, 
we plan to have a candid, practical conversation on how your legal department can get buy-in and start applying legal project management at your organization now. But before we get into those specific tips, let's quickly review how we got to this point and why legal project management is becoming so important. So Michael, I wanna start with you. Uh, there seems to be general sentiment throughout the legal community that efficiency is taking a more prominent role in both the law firm and in-house environments. Have you been seeing the same and why do you think this is the case? Yeah, thanks Mike. So we've definitely seen the same and I think there are two primary reasons. One is the current state of the legal industry and its uh, uh, maturity level. And the second is really uh, in-house counsel, our clients really as, as drivers. So uh, from an industry standpoint, every industry goes through a life cycle from introduction through growth, maturity and decline. And each stage has different attributes like uh, hockey stick revenue growth uh, during the growth stage. Legal is in the mature stage, indicated by, among other things, flat revenue growth and lots of mergers. Like in the first half of 2017, we saw more mergers uh, at the law firm level than we've ever seen before. So competitive differentiators change during each stage as well. And one of the primary differenti differentiators in the mature phase, which is where the legal industry is in right now, is efficiency. So we can see from this slide, 94% of law firms uh, uh, surveyed want to focus on efficiency. They see the need for it. Uh, however, there are obviously challenges changing the law firm model. Uh, change is difficult in the first place and law firms have a particularly strong uh, culture and it's, it's not, not an easy thing to change. If we flip to the next slide, Mike. So this slide speaks to the second reason. Uh, our in-house counsel clients, uh, you know, a key driver for law firms uh, is in their desire to be more efficient uh, comes down to really being responsive to clients. So what we see at DWT, for example, is our clients have a need for efficiency, especially, especially since uh, the 2008-2009 uh, financial crisis, uh, where uh, law, de law departments are tasked to change and be more efficient and that requirement is sort of flowing out to uh, flowing out to their law firm service providers. And I wanna to move to Tara. Tara, you're in-house at AOL. Do you get the same feeling as, as what Michael just referenced? Yeah, um, I do. The efficiency aspect of it is essential. Um, we have to be as lean as possible. And I think that's the key across the board, regardless of where you sit in house um, and a firm and uh, as a consultant, however it has to be, you have to do more with less. And that's just the way it has to be. So um, I definitely agree. It has to be efficient. It has to be lane um, and you have to do like I said more with less. And Adam you touched on this a little bit when we were prepping for this webcast. Um, you talked about collaboration. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah I mean it, <clears throat> because both law firms and, and on the client side where you know you see you know maybe smaller teams, smaller um, project teams, um, you know more emphasis on cost controls and um, one way that we've you know, we personally, um, or as a firm, have really, I think, <clears throat> uh, how we've approached it has really been on a holistic, uh, collaborative approach with with our clients. So that, you know, you're leveraging different um, areas on on the client side and the law firm side. Um, but it, it's a, it's a you know it's it's a way to maximize efficiencies across both organizations. Thanks, Adam. And unfortunately, it seems like a lot of legal departments, especially in-house, are unprepared. And according to Xero's 2016 in-house benchmarking report, where we surveyed over 80 in-house le legal professionals, 70% of respondents defined themselves as either ad hoc, defined, or structured, which means they, for the most part, have an immature process when it comes to managing legal projects. So, Michael, how are you seeing legal teams trying to become more mature? That's a great question. And, you know, we've seen 
we see legal teams putting a lot of energy into this. And there are three, I think, primary areas where I've seen uh, legal departments try to try to mature and move forward. One is through the rise of legal operations professionals. Uh, so in that instance, you have folks who work in legal, maybe or maybe not, maybe, maybe they do or don't have uh, traditional legal training, but they're really focused on bringing uh, operational discipline to uh, the practice of law, whether that's inside of a law firm or inside of a legal department. Uh, the next is a related component that's data and metrics to track operational efficiency and really uh, measure risk. So now you see, you know, instances where folks are not just using the typical uh, subject matter expertise associated with law that's captured in narrative format, but they're starting to look at the numbers a bit more closely and leverage those numbers in order to make smarter decisions. And then the last is the rise of legal process outsourcing companies. So that's uh, companies like uh, Integrion, Elevate, Thomson Reuters has uh, this sort of um, LPO uh, vibe to it as well. And what that, what that means is legal departments and sometimes law firms are pushing lower risk, lower complexity, lower complexity work uh, out to legal process outsourcing companies that can do the work at, uh, at a lower cost. Well, so I think that's a great great segue to our second topic, which is how legal teams are actually becoming more efficient with LPM, legal project management. So let's quickly explain for our audience what we mean when we say legal project management. So Tara, I'm going to pose this to you. Simple question. What is legal project management? So yeah, I thought I would start out with just a simple definition of what legal project management is. Um, so Wikipedia defines legal project management as the application of the concepts of project management to the control and management of legal cases or matters. Um, and why is this emphasis, um, why is emphasis on this now? And I think it's important now more than ever to incorporate the legal project management into our everyday lives because it's imperative for our in-house legal departments to be as self-sufficient and as lean as possible. Running your functions in line with project management principles will allow for a repeatable and defensible process, which will keep your department very lean. And like I said earlier, keeping it as lean as possible and as efficient as possible with a repeatable and defensible process is what makes the biggest difference across the line, I believe. Yeah, Tara, I, I mean, I think it speaks to orchestrating all these activities in a seamless, transparent way. So beyond just talking about the theoretical definition, um, you know, let's talk about outcomes and the benefits. Tara, any examples that you'd like to share about the benefits of legal project management? Yeah, the primary key benefits of the legal project management is the predictability of the process, risk aversion, the defensibility of the process. I think the best example that I can share is how lean the team can be and I know that I keep preaching on that but in my situation it's it's imperative there are two of us who are primarily responsible for all of our e-discovery work and we rarely ever rely on outside firms for assistance prior to incorporating LPM and technology we had a much larger team and we often relied on outside vendors and firms for assistance on cases that we now handle um, almost 100% on our own. I mean, this is, you know, outside of the, you know, the one-offs that are ridiculous that we do need help with. But on a normal situation, we handle these cases on our own now, and there's only two of us. That's pretty amazing, especially with your environment, Tara. I mean, I, mean, I know you've gone through multiple mergers and acquisitions um, that, you know, you've able to actually decrease the size of your team while taking on more uh, obligations and more projects to manage. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, Adam and Michael, you both started applying legal project management for your own teams and your clients. Uh, briefly, what are the outcomes that you see when this happens? And Adam, I'll start with you. Um, you know, I think the slide, you know, touches on a lot of the, you know, some, some overall outcomes that you can, you know, you can quickly experience. I know we, um, when we started down this road, um, or at least really uh, devoting a lot of you know time and energy towards it, um, 
we were able to, you know, realize that by by sen- by focusing on a few s- sort of centralized processes and and getting and tightening those up and getting them um, kind of out of that ad hoc stage that Michael had previously discussed. Um, we're, we're seeing we can, you know, we can move projects quicker. We can move uh, with with fewer resources. Um, so that's something that's really, uh, you know, that we've really been able to uh, to realize. And one other one other area was uh, that I thought was that we were able to button down um, was to actually collaborate closer with our vendors. So we we were able to integrate um, integrate some of our primary vendors uh, into our uh, project management tool directly, um, so that we could we were able to streamline certain processes with them, um, take it out of the sort of ad hoc, um, you know, rules or guidelines on projects, uh, and then it also allows us to leverage some reporting abilities across matters. So you know, you're not you're not really looking at you know your matter specific uh, data. But you can look at it either across a client, across a practice group, um, or even across a department or firm. So those were those are some things that we were really able. To, those are some good outcomes that we've been able to realize. So just in the matter of time, let's move on to our third topic. And we've talked about the need to become more efficient in how legal teams are using LPM to help accomplish this goal. Now, this is where we will want to spend a bulk of our time, and and that's how to incorporate LPM into your process. So this is easier said than done. As all of you know, legal is an industry that doesn't like change, and any change proposed will take some time and real effort to actually be seen through. So, Michael, um, you've you've worked on numerous projects where you've gotten buy-in for LPM with their clients. What's the best way to get this buy-in and for getting people to change their behaviors and try legal legal project management principles? Well, you know, I think this slide speaks to it very much. Um, and I would essentially remove the question marks uh, because you definitely, what I've seen in our environment, need top-down management support. So that sort of clears the way for uh, potential interference as you try to uh, change things. And again, as you said, change is is difficult, so that top-down support is very important. Uh, The bottom-up piece is also super important because you'll come across different practice groups, different practices, and different uh, types of law that have different flavors and elements uh, that require a different approach to project management. Project management is not a one-size-fits-all solution, and it should really be uh, adjusted to meet a particular uh, culture and operational environment. So, you know, what we've seen is top-down, bottom-up, both required, so you're really looking at a hybrid approach to it. And Adam, you know, how you got buy-in for legal project management at Cadden is a unique story, and and I think it really, and if you can touch on it here, here in a sec, but really what I took away from that is, you know, don't try to change everything at once just based on your story. Can you expand on that? Sure. We, you know, we were, I think I was pretty fortunate um, that we, that our senior partners really recognized and have, and have recognized that um, project management is, is important when you're dealing with, um, you know, large cases with voluminous cases. Um, but so getting sort of getting that buy-in wasn't as much of a pain point uh, for us as as it may be for other departments or other firms. But, um, you know, you, you have to approach it, you know, smartly. Um, to, to, to your point or to, to the, what you're saying, Mike, was that, you know, we, um, we didn't try and tackle it all at once. You know, we we identified certain areas and we really focused on those. <clears throat> and we were able to, you know, kind of show that immediate value uh, maybe quicker if than if we tried to, you know, have a much larger uh, application or expansive program. Well, Adam, that's a great segue to our next slide. And that's 
you know, if we move beyond the theoretical, our speakers have each come up with their own example of how they've showcased value of legal project management at their own organization. So, in, especially with legal project management, which can be, you know, a theoretical print idea, um, you know, it's really important to uh, really take note of what these tips are. And so you can showcase value to those executives to get buy-in across the organization for maybe a wider culture change and in incorporating some of these principles and technology. So Tara, let's start first with you. Uh, how are you showcasing value of legal project management at AOL? So what, so, well, what we try to do, we really try to do this. Um, it's, it's a painstaking process, but we try to whiteboard our entire process at least twice a year so we can actually visualize what changes need to be made um, so we can document them accordingly. And this has been incredibly important over the last, especially three years with all of the changes that we've made um, because of the mergers and acquisitions that you mentioned um, earlier. The value here is that we can keep our entire process documented, which is incredibly important. Um, and we can rely on that documentation for every discovery project that we manage. Um, and for instance, if we do need to bring in a vendor, let's say for a review project, we have a training document that's already been vetted and approved, so we don't have to con constantly um, you know, reinvent the wheel to create a new document uh, and get it approved and then uh, you know, send that off uh, to the vendor for, you know, here's your training document that you need. So this is just a process that we try to do, and it also helps us uh, make sure that all of our um, processes are in line with what we are doing today as opposed to what we were doing five years ago, um, because you can only manage your process if your process is appropriately documented. Yeah, that's a great point, but uh, Adam, what are your thoughts on this? How to showcase value of LPM? Um, I think reporting can be an easy uh, can could be an easy and tangible way to to show value for people. Um, you know, it can be it could be they can be complex reports, they could be simple reports. But you know, automating some of those weekly reports that um, that you have to distribute or that people want to see or that can be informative. Um, you know, things things along as staffing case staffing, project loads, um, cycle times for specific, you know, phases of a case or pro, uh, phases of a project, um, e-discovery volume with, with your, you know, hosting vendors, processing vendors, um, and your e-discovery or review teams. Um, and then, you know, on the business side, your, your business metrics or your, or your practice intelligence that you can, um, you can help automate all that. All that is sort of encompassed within, you know, the legal project management spectrum. And that's a great handoff to Michael's uh, tip for showcasing value of LPM, and that goes to success metrics and storytelling. Michael, what do you mean by this? Yeah, that is a great handoff. So um, Adam talked about identifying certain metrics and measuring those and being able to see them through reporting. Success metrics essentially means that in your uh, operations, you define what good looks like, and you define it from a quantify in a quantifiable way. Uh, in our environment, for example, we're constantly trying to win hearts and minds because we're trying to change culture. Uh, attorneys are very independent, they're very intelligent, they're very skeptical, and so people love stories. If we can identify success metrics so in our project deployments we know exactly what good looks like and we hit those success metrics we then incorporate that into our storytelling so we can continue to win hearts and minds so for example if one of our success metrics is to reduce uh, the an important cycle time in a process by 25 percent and we hit it we incorporate that into a story uh, to tell uh, other stakeholders who might be similarly situated, who have not yet used uh, our innovation services, so that they can see both the qualitative benefit of innovating and using legal project management and the quantitative impact that it will have on their practice and their clients. Three great tips here, and uh, I hope everyone was able to take note of those because I, I think they can really help showcase the value of legal project management. And, you know, we've referenced in some of those tips, you know, uh, you know, how technology, what role that plays within legal project management and sort of creating some of these, uh, you know, points to showcase value. 
and we know technology will definitely not be the sole answer for applying LPM effectively, but it can help if you have if you have the time and resource available to learn it and use it effectively. So, Michael, what types of technology are you seeing organ organizations investing in when it comes to legal project management? So, we're seeing a lot around three particular areas: uh, contract lifecycle management, like uh, Aptis, for example. Uh, workflow automation like K2 and ThinkSmart, and then collaboration tools like HiQ, WizDocs, and ThreadKM. Uh, collaboration, I think, is super important. A, a friend of mine always says the smartest person in the room is the room. Uh, you know, if you can get a bunch of smart folks uh, seeing things the same way and aligned, then you get better uh, outcomes for your problem solving. And Michael, we all know about the cost reduction story and efficiency benefits of bringing in technology, but what is the real tangible benefit for people in the legal department of having this type of technology? You know, I think a lot of it really falls into alignment and transparency. You know, again, we're, we're getting at the idea of getting smart people to see the same thing at the same time so that it can work better together uh, to get the results that they're, that they're really looking for. And Tara and Adam, uh, you know, you both have leveraged uh, technology to help streamline your legal and e-discovery projects um, at each of your organizations. Um, you know, Tara, let's start with you. You've leveraged Xtero software to help with some of these uh, project management um, activities. Can you expand on how you're using that? Yeah, I mean, we um, obviously we leveraged Xtero for our legal holds and our e-discovery end-to-end solution, and that's uh, helped us stay as lean as we've been able to because we've been able to automate um, a lot of the processes that we were actually managing on a very um, manual basis in the past. And Adam, um, you know, Cadden has invested in some legal project management technology from Xero. How has that helped influence or transform your process there at Cadden? Um, you know, we've we've I'd say it's it's informed a lot of people um, that maybe uh, didn't have access to information before we kind of rolled this rolled this out. Um, you know, it, it provided a lot more transparency across case teams across across um, you know transparency into some of our vendor processes. Uh, you know, um, so from from an Xtero standpoint, you know, we've seen a lot more uh, transparency internally um, and then externally. But you know, we've you know we also implement uh, we've also been implementing collab you know various collaboration tools on the with our review teams um, and with our other project teams, and then um, basic you know business intelligence BI tools uh, are. are are invaluable. And really, I, I mean, I think based on what all of you sort of said collectively is that, you know, if you, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, if attorneys can have access to dashboards that give them statuses on where things are at when it comes to activities and, and enables them to focus really more on the case strategy and how those metrics will affect the case strategy instead of being embedded and in, in entrenched with the minutia of, you know, specific legal project activities. W would you guys agree with that? Definitely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Great. So we're just about out of time here, and that takes us to um, the last topic of our presentation. And we didn't want to leave anyone in the audience empty-handed, so we thought it would be best to give everyone three best practices that will help you get LPM going at your organization. And and the first best practice comes from Michael. You've worked with numerous organizations getting LPM principles and technology added to streamline legal activities. What piece of advice do you have? Yep, so LPM is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, you know, you have to adjust the LPM regime to fit the deployment environment. You know, culture trumps strategy every time. And so you have to adjust your approach to fit the specific culture uh, in your specific environment, and if you do so, I, I think you that will lead to, to great success. And Adam, uh, you know, moving on to best practice number two, uh, 
what do you think will help legal teams get traction with LPM? Uh, don't try and change everything at once. Have realistic goals, um, achievable short-term goals that are um, that kind of address some of your key pain points. Um, they show high value in a in a short time period. Great. And our third and final best practice comes from Tara. Tara, what is that one thing you want our audience to walk away with from this presentation? Document, document, document. Utilize the documented and repeatable process to make the best use of your LPM process. This will be the best way to manage against any unforeseen issues that may arise.